How are you doing? I'm Martin from Gardens for Life and Birdland Homestead. In this video I'm going to show you a few tricks and tips uh, on how to seed up your trays or how to st plant seeds essentially and some soil blocks we're going to include as well. So we use this professional compost here and we have a potting table. At the moment we were just um, doing some crown divisions here but in general we just pot them up here. We put the compost in the trays we bring them in here, we just close that door, because so we want it to stay warm in here. And so these are the trays that have been um, filled with compost, so that's potting compost. And in this video I'm going to just show you how to start your seeds. We've already got some seeds on the go here, even some plants from cuttings as you can see. And there's rhubarb plants and various other ones. We like to do um, each of the types of plants uh, in a row. All the trays are the same and then we just put one label. That way we don't have to put a label for each of the trays. Usually we use these 12 cell trays but I do like to use soil blocks as well. Soil blocks are handy and they take a bit more effort. Definitely at least take maybe twice as long to make. Um, but they're well worth it because they are uh, air pruned. The roots will be much better quality. You can see here. Let me just pick one up for you. So that's the soil block and you put the seed in there. And you're going to get a really good quality seedling because the roots will actually spread from the center. Hello. How are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Only cuddly now. The dogs have come to visit. They know when the door is closed in the front of the greenhouse, they can just come in through the back. That's good. <laughs> All right. Now you want to get out this way again. <laughs> why don't you come back? Why don't you go back out the same way you came? Excuse me. Excuse me. So um, the soil blocks do tend to dry out a little bit quicker as well. So if you want to check the more detailed video that I made a couple of years ago, I'll put a link in the description or at the end of this video and just comparing soil blocks and seed trays. So it's definitely well worth checking out because there is a lot of differences. We like to do both uh, for different reasons, but uh, it's much quicker to actually seed up these fellas here so and much quicker to fill them up with compost as well so for different types of seeds uh, you definitely need to make a different size of hole you don't want to plant them too deep especially um, if they're very tiny seeds so um, what I like to do is for the likes of pumpkin seeds you got to decide what kind of seeds you're going to plant into your tray before you do because you got to decide how deep to push in to make the dimple or the hole and so for pumpkin seeds we go quite deep because we want those to be well covered and um, for example the um, rhubarb seeds they'd be slightly smaller but still not as small as seeds can get uh, usually flower seeds are quite small and we will um, also be planting some Kohlrabi. So what I like to do is I like to use a little technique that um, Charles Dowding always talks about and that's uh, multi-sowing. So you just take a few seeds and you drop them in. So let's do that. So I like to line up a few trays like this. Just to have them there and that way I can just make uh, indentations in them or holes for the seeds. Now, can you see that okay? So, let me just um, do, do it, you can do it one at a time, like this. If I'm planting, say for example, smaller seeds, I may not, oh, there's a little insect. Put them over there, we want them. The wood lice are very good for you, for your garden. So we just uh, basically make little holes like that. And then we'll take some seeds. We can use uh, the kohlrabi seeds. Of course you want to have your label ready, which I didn't write out yet. So 
We'll take our seeds and we simply drop a few of them into each of the cells. And the reason why that's advantageous is because they will grow in a little cluster and nature will do the spacing. You don't have to thin them out. They'll be fine out there in the garden. You'll just get a few smaller plants, but then if one plant doesn't do too well, the rest of them will pick up the slack. So we'll put about three seeds into each. I'm not too religious about what how, how many seeds I'm putting into it. Now, of course, after you touch the seeds, you really shouldn't put them back in the packet. Uh, even though I've been doing that, I'm probably going to use most of these though. Um, this season, so it's okay. And another little tip for you, never touch the seeds in the packet, never go in there with your fingers, always uh, drop them out like, empty them out like that onto your hand. That way you don't contaminate them in there. Just to make sure that they last for longer in case I want to keep these for next year. Because who needs, who needs a thousand five hundred super schmelz, um, uh, what you call it, kohlrabis. So, um, so all you need to do then, let me just show you here see that a little bit better so those seeds are in there now you don't want to cover them with too much compost so just giving them a slight a light brushing like that that's plenty now that means that the water will actually go in there because you compacted the middle by pushing it down but then you're also lightly covering it just so to exclude light and just bear in mind that some seeds do need light like celeriac I believe and a few others so you can um, just cover them lightly and then all the water actually gets uh, goes into the middle as well. So that's another thing, if you overfill the tray, it might actually be, the water might run off the sides. So you don't want that. Well, that's all there is to it. So that's our tray and you can water that in. Now, there is another thing you can do and that's watering these beforehand, at least for the first time, so that the seeds don't go get washed away. So you could do that before you put your seeds in it, but I like to do it after and just water them very gently because it's easier to brush the compost back on top when they're not soaking wet yet. So let me just show you for pumpkin seeds. I'm going to go much deeper. And you could also do it like this. Could do it with four and one go like that. So let's take some of these. So these are Turks turban. I'm going to grow a couple of different varieties of pumpkins this year, although I do try to keep them separate, usually. I like the Ushiki Kuri so that they don't cross pollinate. So we keep the seeds uh, pure. But at the same time, we might just um, uh, interbreed these varieties of pump pumpkins because they're well worth it. So let me put those seeds aside. Look, that's 12 of them done. And then all you need to do is brush across the top of it. And that's enough. That's enough. You don't need to do any more than that. So I just got to make sure I label these and um, I'm going to put that aside now. That's 12 pumpkin plants already started, but those, you can't keep them in there forever. You got to repot those. So you got to put those into one or two liter pots because you want to keep them indoors in your greenhouse as long as you can. Uh, until the end of May, until at least in Ireland here, when the last frost date is. So. You don't want to risk your plants getting frostbitten because that'll take them down or maybe even kill them, especially pumpkins and courgettes. Which reminds me, got to do some courgettes too. But jizz, we're not going to have a repeat of last year's courgettes uh, because I had way too many plants. I had like, I just decided to start like uh, 20 of each just in case because I had some quite large packets of seeds for courgettes. But then, um, though they all grew and uh, I ended up with courgette plants, giving them to people and planting them here and there. And I ended up with way too many courgettes, but no worries, I didn't even bother preserving them or freezing them because we have chickens, so they'll eat them. Uh, other animals will eat them too. Not sure about dogs. Does anyone here have any experience with dogs eating courgettes? Uh, please let me know in the comments. And um, I'm sure cats definitely won't eat them. Cats are totally carnivores. They won't eat any kind of plants. And um, rabbits, maybe. Yeah, they'll probably eat the courgettes as well. But chickens love courgettes and they're really good for the eggs. So for the soil blocks, I would suggest using them for smaller seeds. For pumpkin seeds, they won't work properly because they're just too small. We do have a bigger uh, soil blocker as well that does 40 millimeter blocks. These are only 25 mil or one inch. So um, 
They're mainly for smaller seeds, but I find that they're very good and compact. So you can do 40 uh, plants in one tray. And these ones take up the same amount of space and you only get two 12s. So that's 24 and 40. So um, you definitely want to um, use them for smaller seeds though. Rhubarb seeds might work. We can give it a go. Let's give it a try now. Can you see that okay? I believe so. I do have a little screen on the front of the camera now. We're all modern now. Now, so this is Chinese rhubarb. And please let me know in the comments if you have Chinese rhubarb or if you've ever had any of it. I know it's medicinal, but also it can be eaten apparently, just like any other variety of rhubarb. But I'm pretty sure I wouldn't eat it after midsummer, same as most of the varieties of rhubarb, or all of them, except for Glaskin's Perpetual, like I always say. I do preach uh, that a lot, that you cannot eat rhubarb after midsummer because it becomes poisonous, because of the oxalic acid. <coughs> as the plant recedes after the 21st of June, it um, brings some of that oxalic acid from the leaves back down into the stalk and then into the root. So you don't want to eat the stalks after that, because it's not good for you. So, um, let's see here, do one here. So I'd say they'll work in these soil blocks. And you might be thinking, Jesus, why is he starting how many? 40 rhubarb. Well, actually, would you believe it or not? These actually sold out completely. Same as actually all the rhubarb plants sold out completely with last winter selection. So if you're still looking for plants, you can have a look at our website and uh, check out what we've got. Okay, so that's that. So those are all full now. So what I might do now is I might actually take a little bit of compost. I'm going to borrow a bit of compost from another tray. I'm just going to cover these very ever so slightly like this. It's a bit tedious, it's definitely a lot more tedious doing soil blocks than it is trays, even for filling them. But it's worth it because it takes up less space, but that's not the main reason because they do get air pruned, the roots. And that's a good thing because then you get a stronger root system as plants grow. And it'll also not get pot bound as well. Because usually when you use a tray, the root is looking to go somewhere and it's just plastic, so it circles. But if you um, have these soil blocks, it'll only grow outwards from the center. So you get a really clean root. Unfortunately, I don't have any to show you at the moment. This is only very early on in the season. So that's it. And you just water that in. And that's all there is to it. Again, just be careful with the soil blocks. If you are using them, they do dry out a bit quicker than the trays as well. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'd like to make lots more videos like this and make them kind of dual purpose for the Homestead channel as well as the gardening channel. But uh, if you haven't subscribed to our Birdland Homestead channel yet, please come on over and uh, subscribe and keep an eye on that because I'm going to be posting up more content there shortly about the homestead itself rather than just the gardens. Okay, thanks for watching the video and if you are local to the Midlands of Ireland you could um, come to one of our in-person in event courses or events and um, we have lots of workshops coming up too. So take a look at our website, it's just gardensforlife.ie forward slash events and we'll hope to see some of you there. Oh yeah, don't forget the Homesteaders of Ireland Swap Meet. That's a free event. It's a community event uh, on the 12th of May. That's happening in Knockrockery in County Roscommon. And please take a look at the website and keep an eye out for details there. Um, we will see you there and please leave a comment. Thanks a million. See you later. Bye bye. Okay. No. Okay. Not a girl. No.
right? That's fair.